Hi and welcome to this chapter on SNS mobile notifications. So in SNS mobile notifications, what you can do is that you can actually publish a message to SNS. That message will then go through the mobile provider and then be pushed to the device accordingly. Now by default, AWS has support for these mobile providers. So you have the Amazon device messaging, the Apple push notification, the Baidu push service, the Google Cloud Messaging, which is also known as Firebase, the Microsoft Push Notification and the Windows Push Notification. Now the overall steps are, first you need to register your app. So that's your, you know, your mobile app with the mobile provider. Once you do that, you basically get something known as a server and API key. That key is something that you register with SNS in the AWS console. Once you do that, you need to create a platform endpoint. So the platform endpoint is your device. So when you implement the API in your mobile app, you will get something known as a device token. That token you upload to the AWS console or you can use your program to create the platform endpoint object from this device token. So once you upload the device token, you've created your platform endpoint, SNS can then publish a message to this endpoint. This is how the entire flow works. What I'll do is that I'll just show you a quick demo. We'll use Android Studio and see how to create a platform endpoint and publish a message to that endpoint. So for this example, I'm using Android Studio uh, and using Java as the SDK. Now I've created a very simple Android application in Android Studio. This is my main package, so com.example.demo.application. Now the first step is to basically first go to your cloud messaging service and create a project and an app. For this example, I'm using the cloud messaging service provided by Google. So initially it was known as the cloud messaging service, but now it's changed to Firebase. So you can access uh, the Firebase console using your normal uh, Gmail account credentials. That's pretty simple. Once you logged into Firebase, you can go ahead and create something known as a new project. Now I've already gone ahead and created a project known as demo. One key thing that you need to note, so once you've created the project and you go on to the cloud messaging section, you get something known as the server key and the legacy server key. Now these keys are used when you register your project in the simple notification service. So I'll just quickly switch on to SNS. So this is your normal SNS dashboard. If you need to create a platform application, so you want push notifications to be enabled for mobile devices, you need to click on create platform application. We then need to choose what's the platform. So we're using the Google cloud messaging service. You need to give a name and you need to give something known as the API key. So I said, this is the key that's provided by the mobile provider. And that's the one over here. So you can give either legacy server key or the new server key. Once you put the server key over here, you can then go ahead and create your platform application. So you now have an application in AWS, which has the permissions because of the key to communicate with the Google cloud messaging service and it's linked to your project. So that's the first step of completion. So if I go to my applications, I already have created a project known as demo. And if you click on this, currently it has no endpoint. So the endpoint, remember, is your mobile device. We still haven't come to the point. All we have done is that we have first ensured we created an application in the simple notification service that points to your project in Firebase. So that's the first step which is done. The next thing is to create your app. So 
in Firebase, you got your project defined. Next, you need to create your application. So this is the application which will send notifications to your mobile device. So I've already gone ahead and created an app. It's pretty simple. You can click on the add app button. So over here, I'm saying add Firebase to an Android application because that's what I'm using. You need to give the package name. So that's the package name here, com.example.demo.application. That's your main package. Once you've done that, you'll get something known as a config file. So let me quickly cancel this. You will get this Google services.json file that you need to add to your Android application. So there were very three simple steps in the add app. Let's go back. So once you give a package name, we can give a app nickname that's optional. We then can download the config file in the second step and in the third step it will just show you how to configure your Android project to communicate with Firebase. These are just simple steps. So I'm not going through this process because I'm going to show you what I've actually done in Android Studio using these same steps. So I'm going to click on cancel. So here I am in Android Studio. Now the first thing we need to do is I said configure your Android project to work with the Firebase APIs. So the first thing in your project build gradle, you need to add this class path, which will help download the necessary packages and dependencies to work with Firebase. Then in your module gradle bundle, you need to ensure you apply these plugins. So don't worry, I'll actually put a document as a resource in this chapter, you can then put these steps and then implement it yourself. So once this is done, you have the necessary package dependencies. You then need to make sure that you sync your Gradle bundle so that it will download the necessary dependencies from the internet. Now in the main activity, what I've done, I've created a simple button. In the button, I've Put the click listener so I'm listening to the click handler so there is a class known as a firebase instance ID so this can be used to get the token which we can then use as a platform endpoint I am just putting then this token in the log so that we can copy this token and create a new platform endpoint so I'm going to run the code now I also have the code, by the way, to receive the message once the message is sent through SNS. But we'll go through that a little bit later on. I first want to show how we're going to actually create the platform endpoint. So that's done, I said, by first getting the token. If you want, I will also show you the activity.xml. So I said, I just have one simple get token button. And in that button, in the click listener event, I'm using the Firebase SDK to get the token so that we can rest it as a platform endpoint. So let's go ahead and run this. I've already added a virtual device. So I'm just going to wait for this virtual device to load and then come back. So I have my emulator launched. Now I'll click on get token. So you can see that I've got notification of the token. So that's the token that we need to register in the platform endpoint. So we can copy this entire value. And now let's, and now let's go on to SNS and create our platform endpoint Put the token. So here, you know, you can actually upload multiple tokens. So you will have obviously multiple devices for multiple users you will get those tokens via an API. So you won't have a button like I do. I said this is just to show you a demo how to get the device token. Ideally, when you have your mobile application, you have internally an API being called. You will get the device token and you will use an API to register the device token automatically with SNS. So you can do all of this through an SDK on API. If you're doing this manually, you can also upload via a CSV file. But if you're doing a single token, you can click on 
add endpoint. So now you have your application and you have the endpoint defined. So if you go on to the application, you can see now that you have an endpoint. Now, if I actually go ahead, I click on this and I say publish to the endpoint. So let's publish a test message and click on publish message. And now if I go on to my mobile device or the emulator and if I just see if I can get a notification so you can see I've got a notification of test message. So the message from SNS has actually gone on to my mobile device. This is through the endpoint. So now we're back in the Android studio. We've seen how we've got the notification via the device, but you need to add the necessary code to ensure that you intercept this message and actually put it onto the mobile device. So we can do that using the Firebase messaging service class that's available. Now I said I will put all of this code in a document and put it as a resource, but I'll just quickly go through it. So there's already a Firebase messaging service class that you can actually use to intercept the message. So all I'm doing is that on the message received, so this will get invoked whenever a message is received. I am just getting the data and ensuring I build a notification and send it to the mobile device. And in order to ensure that this can communicate with the internet and ensure that we can actually get the notification, you have to add the permissions and you need to add your classes as a service in the Android manifest.xml. So once you've got all of this set up, you can actually then get notifications and see how the SNS notification service works. So I hope you've got an overall understanding. So from an exam perspective, it's good to have an overall understanding how as a developer, you can use the SNS mobile notification service. That marks the end of this chapter. Let's move on to the next.